Now, what's been your biggest song so far in your music catalog? Oh man, that track, Johnny from Motherfucker, with uh, legendary, iconic DJ Drama featuring DA. And why do you consider that song to be your biggest at this point? Oh man, that motherfucker went viral, like a million views, like for real. And what platform is that you're referencing, the, those million views? Man, YouTube. And for those in the audience getting to know you for the very first time, care to share your channel name on YouTube as well? Oh, you know, you can uh, look me up, Google me, Hood Rich Savvy. Now, are there any unknown facts or stories in regards to this song that's never been publicly mentioned before? Could be in regards to creating it, releasing it, Excuse me, creating it, recording it, or releasing it? No, uh, I came up with that thing, man. It was like, I just always stepped the game as a youngster. So, you know, I was like, legendary and trauma. I was like, man, you know, everybody don't get a chance to, you know what I'm saying, rock with the legends of the game, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's major right there. Definitely. Any other unknown facts? or stories in regards to this song never been publicly mentioned before. Hmm. Nah. Now, did you know when you were creating, recording, or releasing this song that it was going to be one of your biggest, if not the biggest in your catalog of music? Man, you know what I'm saying? Hey, making up with a legend like that right there in the game, you know, that's... Definitely be, you know, brought to the Wangs, the Tilts, the G's, the Gooches. Nah, I mean, that legendary. And what specifically, thinking back, led this song to get as far as it has today compared to your other songs? Oh, man, you know what I'm saying? Just, I guess, how that, how that thing was, you know what I'm saying? The hook, you know what I'm saying? They rocking with it, you know what I'm saying? Get money vibes, you know what I'm saying? Just streets picked up on it, you feel me? Now, just to cross the T's and dot the I's here, was it a particular platform you released it on? I released it on all platforms. But you know, everything's so visual now. They want to see they want to see you, plus hear you nowadays. So, you know what I'm saying? Was it a marketing strategy of some sort with this song? Definitely. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I remember when, you know, I stepped the game as a youngster, you know what I'm saying? Drum was on almost everybody's mixtape, like, got this, you know what I'm saying? Like, plus here, Grammy nominated one or nine, you know what I'm saying? So that, that be it, you know what I'm saying? I just stepped the game as a youngster. In the mixtape game, I kind of want to just go back on that way with just how it used to be. Were you signed to a distribution company or a record label at that time? Man, straight out the trenches. I'm talking about independent, like folks picking up on their music, going crazy. Now, you mentioned there's a music video for this song. But just for clarification, do you think it was the visual that led to this song's success or just the audio itself? Man, I say both. Because they want to hear you nowadays, plus they want to see you pop it nowadays, so... Definitely the visual, you know what I'm saying. And did you release both at the same time, the audio and the visual, or one after the other? That one right there came out, same time, same time. Now, because of that song's success for you, was there any plans for a remix? I definitely been been thinking, you know what I'm saying. It's still on the table, we can do it over. And is it just a thought, or is this something that's actually in the works for you? A remix? You know, basically the thoughts right now. Anything else you want to mention about this song, or question you weren't asked, people want to know about it? Oh, man. You were just like... You were just, you know what I'm saying, just... I had that idea, I was like, man... Link up with a legendary legend, then I studied the game as a youngster, man, for sure. Now, speaking of DJ Drama, how did you get that opportunity to collaborate with him for this song? 
man, when that opportunity just came across, it was like, you gotta take it. Like, you can't just sit there and be like, man, you don't know. I like, man, let's get it. You feel me? Everybody don't get the opportunity. So was this something organic or was this something paid for? Man, that shit was like organic. And where do you stand on that debate of organic appearances, organic features versus paid appearances, paid features? You know, it go 50-50. Everything ain't business, so you know. Now, when it came to DJ Drama, do you remember how you two met for the very first time? Ah, oh, man, truth be told, management, you know how it go. Shit, reach out. Can I get this? You know, who, who, go from there. Now, did you get a chance to work with him in person for this at all, or was it just trading sessions digitally, uh, conducting the business separately through phone, email, FaceTime, things of that nature? Yeah, definitely. Email, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. So, as of this moment, you've yet to meet him in real life. Not yet, not yet. Now, what about... Well, that's good there. Okay. Okay, so that's the end of that segment. Okay. Now I want to ask you uh, this, all right? And it's still in regards to that same topic there. Cool, cool. Okay, now... Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Okay, now currently on YouTube, you have over 1 million views sure. on a song called Trap Jumpin'. Yes, sir. Featuring DJ Drama and DA. Yes, sir. Now, circumstances could be different for everyone, but can you give the audience five tips on how to get 1 million views on YouTube for a music video? Man, you gotta just be yourself, be original, step out of the box. You know what I'm saying? Have a game plan. Figure it out what you want to do, how you want to go from there. Give it to the bird, give it to the people. But you got to have good quality music at the same time. Now, when it came to this video and the marketing of it, <coughs> excuse me, was there any uh, money involved as far as like advertising the video? For example, there's sometimes people that spend uh, ads on YouTube for their video and the video could be a music video as in your case or it could be videos of any other sort but sometimes people do spend money on the youtube platform directly with youtube to advertise said video of whatever that may be uh was that the um uh was that something that happened in this instance with this music video or you didn't spend no money at all in terms of advertising it with youtube itself social media man that thing a machine folks get the you no know, kissing on, kissing on, a friend of friend, word to word, sha sha, hey, go up from now. So it was simply organic. Yes, sir. And you mentioned this in a previous question, uh, but for those that didn't get a chance to watch or listen to that portion of questions with you, going to ask you this uh, one more time, but. Uh, when you did release that music video, were you assigned to a distribution company or record label at that time? Man, it's great. Independent out of the trenches. I'm talking about just working my mood. Anything else you want to mention about this music video? Hey, man, you know, shout out to the legendary people that did it before me, Trap Music, Tilt, G's, Gucci, Future, you know what I'm saying? Big influences, you know what I'm saying? As a youngster, I studied the game. Now, any interesting or favorite memories with other recording artists or producers you had a chance to be around or worked with you want to share with the audience today, looking back now at your music career so far? I mean, it's just been a blessing to just pop it and do it. Always drink it as a youngster. Like I say, everybody don't get no opportunities to just do it, you know what I'm saying? So it's a blessing. Now, you mentioned previously a song called Trap Jumpin' you have featuring DJ Drama and DA. You also have other songs. Yes, 
Yes, sir. A, a song called Back to the Basics featuring OT Genesis. Yes, sir. And another song called Just Like This featuring Derez Deshaun. Yes, sir. When it came to those other features, whether it was DA or OT Genesis or even Derez Deshaun, for example, did you get a chance to meet any of these people or collaborate with any of these people in person? For sure, for sure. You know, me and DA, we popped that shit, did that shit. You know what I'm saying? Been popping that shit on social media, man. That shit was going crazy. So, you know what I mean? I'm popping it with the, hey, these folks big. So, they like that good music got was popping. So, we just worked a little move, went from there. And what about OT or Derez? Did you get a chance to collaborate with either of those in person, physically, or was it merely just digitally trading sessions and things of that nature? I was just training sessions. Like, hey, they like, I like what you're doing. Keep doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? Now, when it comes to DA, do you remember how you two met for the very first time? Yes, sir, man. Bro was grinding, going crazy with that shit. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I definitely like how he was popping this shit. So I was like, man, bro going hard. You feel me? I'm a fan of the music, bro, hard. So I was like, well, we linked. Both got good music. We went from there. So you reached out to him and definitely. initiate this? Definitely. And how many times do you think you've been around him physically at this point? So I've been around him, bro, a couple times for real. Yeah, bro, real, bro, real one too. You know what I'm saying? Good people. Shot him in Germany, Alabama. Now, you may have answered this next question already, but going to formally ask you here in case you want to dive in a little bit deeper, and if you feel like you've answered it already, we'll just move forward to the next question. But what is D.A. really like? Man, he a real one, solid, man. A talented artist. Stand-up guy. Now, what's the best advice you receive from him or most important thing you learned being around him so far? Man, you got to stay positive, most definitely. Keep grinding. Got to do that. No matter just what it is, keep grinding, stay focused, keep doing it. Now, for clarification, was this advice you were given or something you learned being around? No, in between, you know. Both, you know what I'm saying? Positive vibes. Now, is there any other music between you two aside from this song? Shit, some, some more shit on the way, on the work. Anything else you want to mention about DA or question you weren't asked, people want to know about him. Got no more. Okay. Now, previously you were asked about features. Yes, sir. And organic versus paid. And where you stood on that debate. Now, when it comes to paying for features, what's the most you've ever spent paying for a feature? I mean, when you, when you really got that raw talent, you know what I'm saying, they going to basically fuck with you, you know what I'm saying. It might not be what they use they might do, but if you know it's the business, you know everybody's shit different. So when you really popping your shit and you hard, they fucking with you and they want to see you go up, it's going to always be some shit where y'all can work out some shit for real. So maybe uh, some form of a discount or things of that nature. For sure. You, you really hard like that, though. And sometimes possibly for free, no charge? For sure. Um, and you never did state an answer to it, but care to share the most you've ever spent for a paid feature? <laughs> Man. When you really hard like that, you're going to vary. Sounds like you don't want to give an answer here. Hey, you know, you're going to vary to each and everybody else. Because some folk might get taxed in that shit. Jib could, but you really raw talented and they like what you're doing. They love your music. You know, it's a little business into that shit, but they want to see you go up. You know what I'm saying? They want to see you shine and pop it. They like what you're doing, so for sure. Now, who's been the friendliest celebrity you've met so far? Now, I want to clarify some of the words I just said in that question there. When I say friendly, it could be the nicest, the coolest, so on and so forth. I'm using that phrase loosely here. And celebrity, again, 
using that loosely as well. Could be a famous person, well-known person, so on and so forth. But back to the original question here. Who's the friendliest celebrity you've met so far? Man. Some celebrity, but I just can't even think of it like Jim right now. <laughs> what about on the opposite end of the spectrum? Who's been the unfriendliest celebrity you've met so far? And again, unfriendliest, using that loosely here, could be not nice, uncool, rude, so on and so forth. I really ain't met too many of this. You know what I'm saying? Not friendly or rude, but you know. Some folk might just got that energy where they just ain't fucking with them like that too at the same time. So each their own, you feel me? Has that happened to you? I just be humble and, you know what I'm saying, respectful. So, nah. Now, when it comes to celebrities, do you have any Diddy stories? No Diddy. You heard a uh, new song, Take That. <laughs> Now, you honestly have none, or you have some, you just don't want to share them? I don't know nothing about that type of shit. <laughs> no, sir. Just curious there. <laughs> okay. Now, let's take it back for a second. For those... Let me start a new role. Okay. For those in the audience getting to know you for the very first time, care to share where you were born. I'm a real Georgia baby, born in Georgia. Like I was in Georgia to be exact, but I went raised, though, you did. Care to share where you were raised? You no, know, I was raised in uh, southwest of Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? It's a small city called Dawson, Georgia. We were right in between Columbus, Georgia, and Albany, Georgia. And you know, I was, I was grew up around that sort of side area, for sure. And how long do you think you were raised in that area for? Is there an approximate age bracket you could put? So, for example, were you raised there from 5 years old to 15 years old? Uh, man, lots of family, though. Like, you know, I was, I grew up, though. You feel me? Do you want to put a, a, a grade bracket on it? Maybe uh, elementary school or 5th grade to high school or 12th grade? For sure, for sure, or... Uh... No, like elementary school, for sure. And do you still reside in that area today? Uh, you know, in between working my move, Atlanta, to, you know, Southwest Georgia, you know. Now, was there an age or grade you formally or officially move out of that area? Say that again, huh? Was there an official, excuse me, was there a grade or an age perhaps you officially leave that area? You move out of that area? Talking about uh, Dawson. Yes. Oh, you talking about Dawson or Dawson? Dawson. Oh, you know, definitely, yeah, you know. Right, you get around by 18, start a maneuver, figuring out. So you officially move out at 18? For sure. Now, what was the reason back then for the move? Oh, uh, man, y'all tried the school thing, college thing, you did. And care to share how far you ended up getting with your education? Yeah, matter of fact, uh, I tried the school thing, you know what I'm saying? I got a couple grades, a couple certificates, you know, but I was just doing it just to, I was just trying to figure it out, you feel me? The best route, but I, you know, music was just what I love to do. And care to share what certificates you received? Are we talking um, associate's degree, bachelor's degree, master's degree, a trade school degree, uh, or certificate, or something of that nature, for lack of definitely a better phrase? Some, definitely some skills. I, I require, you know, I acquired some skills, you feel me? Care to share any of them? Trap skills. <laughs> Let me start on Jay. Jay being funny with the camera, though. Oh, y'all smoke, oh, y'all all smile, I did. Gucci did come to my school, like, I just thought about him, he asked me a celebrity, Gucci actually came to my school, he talked to me, like, definitely, he did that, so you can re-ask me that question, I can definitely fill you in on that one. No, it's okay, we've moved on, but, um, alright, well, that answers that, well, that's okay. Yo, Gucci actually came to my high school, like, I was so surprised. <laughs>
Shot three. Let's get it. I've never been scared of hard work. If the money's out there, and the only thing that's stopping me from getting it is putting in the work, you might as well go on and pay me now, because I assure you that work will get done. We can't change where we're from, or who our families are, or what kind of resources we have at the start. But we can control how hard we work. There's always more we can do to reach that extra gear. Another hour to put in, more research to do, or another take to try to get it right. I'm not saying the gospel of hard work is the be at all, end of all of success, but it's a cornerstone of it. That's for damn sure. We all have a choice to make when it comes to how we use our time and how we go about pursuing our dreams. We can talk about it or we can be about it. That's not to say all your dreams will come true if you simply put in the work. They may or they may not, but I guarantee you, if you don't put in the work, that's all it'll ever be, Jet Dreams. Now, what are your thoughts on what you just read? Hey, man, you got to strive for greatness. I'm talking about thrive, flourish. You got to be a dog. You got to want it. You feel me? Now, when it comes to music, was that a dream of yours? Man, ever since a youngster, man, I always did music, you know what I'm saying? Used to go to school, rap at school, write rhymes in class, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, definitely music. Now, why did you become a recording artist? Man, it was at a time where I seen, well, I always took it as like a hobby. I took it serious, you know, I'm trying to fuck around with the streets or whatever, you know what I'm saying? You start seeing people dying, going to jail, and you got to figure out where route you're going to go. You're going to either do something, keep dreaming, or make something shake. So, you know what I'm saying? Put my all into this shit, man. Go for it and do it. Like you say, just a dream is just a dream. You know, putting the work forward. And care to share what age or what grade, perhaps, if you were in school at the time, you make that decision to uh, take music serious instead of just the hobby? Oh, man. I say, like, 18, I definitely wanted to just, after high school, definitely take it to a serious low. And care to share the high school you attended back then? Oh, yeah, man. Terra High, for sure, you know what I'm saying? They known, well, Dawson George is actually known for, like, a part of time. I got, like, the latest tailgate in the state of George, for sure. Hey, actually, we had Gucci come to our school. Gucci, man, LaFleur actually came to my school, for sure. That was a surprise, like, for sure. And speaking of ages, care to share your current age at this point? Man, right now, 29. And your birthday while you're at it, the month and the day, perhaps? 1205. Now, at this point, what genre of music do you consider yourself? Man, I'm an artist, you feel me? So, you might go hip hop, rap, trap, trap, soul, you feel me? Definitely want to give something to the ladies, so I got to get that right RB artist, and we're going to go from there and pop it. That's what I want to add in my catalog, for sure. Now, you've mentioned a variety of genres or subgenres here, but if there was a circle chart of 100%, what would you say is the percentage of all those things you just mentioned? Hmm. And this is a rough estimate here. For sure. You know, they're going to put me in the rap, hip hop category. For sure. And, and out of that 100%, that circle pie chart, what would you say is that percentage of that genre there, of your music? Hmm. I'm going to say, like, a good. 85% of what I did so far, definitely. That right now. Now, do you remember how you were introduced to that genre of music? Oh, uh, man, I grew up out here in Georgia, so you already know, like, Dungeon Family, Outkast, Good Mob, like, as a youngster coming from the 90s, like, that's what it was out here in Georgia for me, you feel me? Now, was this the environment that was playing this music? Was it one of your parents, like your mother or your father, playing this music? Oh, I know my pops used to know about that good of my office shit, so definitely, but the environment, and definitely, you know, outcast, okay, good of my all, that shit was like what I grew up on when I had in charge, for sure, as a youngster. Because sometimes parents will raise their children 
under a genre of music. Didn't know if that was the case for you. Didn't know if, for example, your father uh, raised you with hip-hop music or rap music playing in the house and things of that nature. You know, I just always liked what I liked, you feel me, with the music. Now, additionally, was this genre of music the first genre of music you ever encountered in your life? Oh, Michael Jackson and Tupac, man. That, that was definitely what I heard growing up as a youngster, you feel me? And I videotapes on camcorder because I'm a nanny baby, so they got me on film jamming the Tupac and Michael Jackson. Plus my people, my older cousin and family be telling me how you used to be jigging and jamming to that shit. <laughs> Plus I seen myself on film, camera as a youngster, as a little baby, so it's like, I see it. Definitely did. Now, how did you learn how to rap? What was that learning process like for you back then? Ah, uh, man. Work daddy, work daddy, kept doing it. If I would, might say you suck, sound like garbage, but hey, you got to scribe for greatness. You know what I'm saying? People going to tell you a lot of things, but it's all you. If you want to stop, quit, or whatever. Now, for clarification, would you say you were self-taught, or did anyone teach you how to rap? Man, self-taught for sure. Now, did you take music classes in school of any sort? Man, I actually did. I used to, uh, I used to be on the drum line. I ain't gonna care. I always liked the music and shit, though. And how many grades did you do that for, the drum line? Ah, uh, man, I say probably like three years out of high school. And was that freshman, sophomore, junior, or? Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay, didn't do it senior year? Nah, nah, definitely senior year. Okay, so uh, what grades did you actually do drumline? Because you mentioned three, high school's okay, four. Okay, okay. Yeah, All right, for sure. When I first popped that issue, freshman year, I was faking it on the trumpet. Like, I wasn't really reading no music. I was just, you know, just faking the funk. Like, okay. Then they were just like, because I wasn't going to do that band shit at first. Like, I was like, nah, if I can be on the drum line, you feel me? Yeah, and then worked out a deal. That shit went from there. Can you shed some more light on that? Worked out a deal, things of that nature? She freshman year, they were like, you do this right here, then next year, you gonna be on the drum line. So, you know what I'm saying? They they stay true to it, you feel me? So, definitely. Yeah. And what instrument did you actually play on that drum line? Ah, uh, man, some folks might be familiar with the tenor drum, you feel me? It's almost like a little baby bass drum, you did. And what led you to that particular instrument back then? You know, that was what was available, you feel me? Plus, I was just getting started, so I wanted to give it a try, you know what I'm saying? As a youngster, you know, I seen Drumline, Nick Cannon, that shit was fire, so, yeah, I wanted to give that shit a try. Now, did you ever end up doing competitions? Competitions, like? With that Drumline? Oh, for sure. Yes, sir. And how far did it get? Was it just regional competitions, national competitions? Shit, all over George. <laughs> did you ever get a chance to end up doing any major parades, like the Macy's Day Parade in New York, for example, Thanksgiving weekend? Uh, you no, know, uh, where I'm from, you feel me, homecoming and Albany State homecoming, them, them like the biggest things around, so people come from here, there, everywhere, just to... Uh, you know what I mean? Come fuck with this city. So, yeah, them definitely them big parades. Okay, so you do drumline sophomore, junior, senior year. Uh, was there any chance of you continuing on with the band or band instrument into uh, college, perhaps, or furthering your education and things of that nature? Shit, just further the music, you feel me? Now... Did any of that, uh, that freshman year when you were playing with the trumpet, I believe you said, or uh, those three years on the drum line, sophomore, junior, senior in high school, did that, any of that, help you with becoming a recording artist at all? Mm, I'm going to say, yeah, a little bit, you know. I learned a little bit of just ring music, but I get just the rhythm on beat. Definitely, you feel me? So, yeah, definitely that. Now, hypothetically speaking, could you have gotten to where you're at musically at this point without being involved in any of that stuff? Hmm. 
you was all in the journey, man. So I look back on it and say, definitely that, the music. Okay, so aside from Drumline, did you have a music tutor at all? Nah, I never had a music tutor. A vocal coach? None of Private lessons of any sort? No. Just curious there. Now, moving forward, do you remember your very first song? Very first song for sure, back in high school. Care to share the title of it if you remember and what that song was about back then? Man, one of my first songs, you were like, I was fucking with Mr. Craft, like recording, like an old ass, like microphone. You wouldn't need no studio microphone. We would play the goddamn beat from the speakers. Like that shit, like 07, 06 type of, nah, I say like 07, 08 type shit back right then, like, just went from there. Do you re excuse me, do you recall the title to that song? Oh, uh, my very first song, I think they like my swag, definitely. And do you recall what that song was about? Man, it was just back when that swag, before they were talking about drip, sauce, and all that, you feel me? It was just swag, so definitely about how you put that shit on, what you talking about now, you feel me? Putting that shit on, having that shit on, you feel me? So. Just my demeanor, you feel me, swag, for sure. Now, were any of those lyrics true back then? Man, I was just a youngin' putting it together, you know what I'm saying, rhyming, but for sure, yeah. And was that a physical release, like on CD or vinyl, for example, or a digital one, like a mixtape website, a DSP, so on and so forth? For sure, by then, they had spitchogame.com and all that shit was going on, so... You know, you just upload it, and that's what was going on back then, you feel me? Now, is that song still available for people to listen to right now if they wanted to? The thing about it is, I wasn't even calling myself Hood Red Sap at the time. I was just a youngster in high school, just, you feel me, going through the ropes of just doing music, just trying to just progress and get better. So, I thought it might be on YouTube, you feel me? And do you recall what the stage name was back then? Oh man, by then I, I was just going through it, trying to figure it out. I was calling myself Blaze at the time, you feel me? So it might be that right up maybe on YouTube or some shit like that. <laughs> and was that the only stage name you ever had previous to Hood Rich Savvy? Nah, I was, you know, I was going by Blaze, but you know, at the time I was trying to figure out something to stand out. On his own, you feel me? Back then, it was so many blazes over the go, what was over going on. So uh, then I was going by Jay Barkley. Then I switched that shit up. One day I was just rapping with my partner there, doing a song. And I was like, Hood Rich on Seven. I was like, I was already going by Seven at one point anyway. And I added that Hood Rich to that shit, man. And I was like, y'all, that's it. I'm Hood Rich Seven. And was that the chronological order of all your stage names in the past? For sure. Now, there are some recording artists who take down, delete old music of their catalog uh, in public. Was that ever a thought back then? Hey, man, as you progress and get better, you know what I'm saying? You like, it's not quality to even be out there no more, you feel me, so. Now, what was the reaction to that song back then of yours? Ah, oh, man. Your first song. You doing music, you feel me? You know, it's always gonna be mixed reviews, so I'm prepared for that, you feel me? Did your parents hear that song by any chance? I don't know, right? Probably so. And just for clarification, was this the first song you recorded or publicly released? I think that was like the first one, basically, publicly released, you know what I'm saying, by then. As a youngster, you ain't on no buddy, you just putting it out there, man. I just got a song recorded, so you just throwing it out there, you feel me? That would have so you learn about the quality, definitely. When's the last time you listened to that song yourself? 
man, I ain't gonna flex. I think I ran across that shit like seven months ago, maybe. <laughs> and what did you think when you heard it? You know, just progress, you know, how far you come. Well, you know, I was a teenager at, at that time, so it's a whole different mindset, mind frame, too. Now, when do you feel like you create your best music at this point? Ah, oh, man. Hold on, say it again. When do you feel like you create your best music at this point, moving forward? My best music? Man, I just try to make good quality music, you know what I'm saying? Different vibes, different beats, different sounds. I go from the... Now, can you show the front cover to this book on camera? Yes, sir. Raise it just a little bit higher. When you see this book from Jeezy, what does it mean to you? Man, he's a legend in the game, you feel me? Like, he one of them ones, like I say, I studied the game. Like, they came in with drama, him, Tilt, Gucci, Jeezy, Wayne. Like, them names are big, they legends to me. So, definitely, I studied them. I studied the game as a youngster. And you also follow him on social media, in particular with your Instagram profile. For sure, Big Snow, y'all. Legendary right here in George. Now, for those in the audience getting to know you for the very first time, care to share your screen name on IG as well. Hey, you already know, BMV Savvy underscore, I mean, hold on, BMV underscore Savvy, you did. Now, zooming out, are you a book reader? Oh, yeah. You know, reading is knowledge, you feel me? You gotta educate yourself. Well, that's who you wanna be educated and elevate to the net level, you feel me? That's what I'm on. What's a book that's changed your life? Oh, man. A book that didn't change my life. Hmm. It's been a couple of them, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. Wanna share any of those titles? I can't even really just give you the. I, I can't even think about the names of them right now, you feel me? But definitely, it's been some books. All right. And when it comes to Jeezy, final question here, just for transparency, do you know him personally by any chance? Nah, nah. Dope music, though.